All my clothes, my jewelry. Child, let me tell y'all about Mr. Steve Harvey. Yes, the comedian, Steve Harvey. So anyone that knows me knows that I'm working on my book right now. So I've been really getting into memoirs and, and stories about people's lives that have similar lives like mine. You know, people that's been through a lot of trauma in their lives. And y'all know I love story time. So I got this, I read this girl book. Um, it's called Men Lie When the Truth Will Do. It was Steve Harvey's ex-mistress. It's a New York Times bestseller. Y'all go check it out. But anyway, he was dating her for nine years behind his wife's back. But most of the time, she didn't even know that he was married. And I know y'all like, how can she not know that he's married? Because I'm one of those people like, oh, you know. But when you're dealing with a celebrity, it's kind of different because they're in and out of town. Sometimes she didn't see him for months because he'd be on the road, things like that. So he literally had like, this man had like four different families, four different places and four different homes. And they all thought that they was the only one. It was crazy. Including Marjorie, the one that he's with now. Oh, she was the other woman just right with the lady that wrote the book. They met up and had had lunch together and everything. Marjorie been around for a long time, y'all. She was the other woman for at least maybe 15 years before he actually married her. That's crazy, right? Anyway, getting back to my point. He had this woman to move to California. Mind you, she thinking she's the only one. She moved to California, left her whole family, everyone that she knew, all her friends behind because she was, you know, she was dealing with a celebrity. He, she knew that he had her. He, he had the money. That wasn't the problem. But he had no loyalty. Once she moved out there and gave up her whole entire life, he disposed her like she was a piece of trash when he got tired of her. One day she came home to a notice saying that the home was being foreclosed. This man changed his number. He just disappeared off the face of the earth when nobody get her in contact with him. Um, she would call his assistants and, you know, his camp, the people that was around him. She would send letters to his office, like all kinds of stuff. And y'all know if a celebrity don't want to be reached, they're not going to be reached, period. She was down to like a hundred dollars in her pocket. They had these people had came to her house and took every single thing out of her house. Her she lost her clothes. Her car was repossessed. Every like everything. This woman at the end of it was sleeping in her car. And the worst part about this is that that is not even the only woman that he have done that to. Like have made completely dependent on him and then just throw him to the wolves. Let me know if y'all want me to do a series about it. It is crazy and messy, child. And let's not forget Wicked. Yeah, that's what we'll do. At 100 Lights, I'll break down all the tea for y'all, step by step. Pop your popcorn, because it's going to be a long story. As you guys can see, I'm currently in my car, packed up, about to move back home with my parents after leaving an abusive relationship. I'm really just trying to warn people right now so they won't have to be in my position because I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I moved into an apartment with a specific individual in October of 22 and one thing that I felt like they reassured me so many times, hundreds of times, was that they wanted to be a provider. They wanted to be that person for me. They wanted us to do this life thing together. That like That's, that's one thing that he wanted me to know for sure before we moved in together. So we moved in together, like I mentioned. The problems didn't start occurring till August of 2023. I'm just tell y'all this so y'all can know exactly what's leading up. So June, July of 2023, we had conversations about was we going to resign the lease, move or whatever. But both of us literally agreed that we wouldn't go sign the lease. I mean, I'm sorry. We both had decided that we are going to sign the lease. We ain't got time for all those expenses when it comes to moving, application fees, all that. We just going to resign the lease. So we had ended up getting into an argument in August. Like it had literally carried from when I was at work all the way to when I got home. So in the midst of this argument, he ended up dropping a bomb on me, stating that whether me and him are together or not, he's going to move out when the lease is up. 
it caught me off guard, y'all. It caught me off guard when I tell y'all I was so confused because I had remembered when we had this conversation many times before, like several times, whether we was going to resign the lease or move. And both of us agreed that we was going to resign the lease. So in the midst of the argument, he dropping that bomb on me. It was just, it caught me off guard. So I just was like, huh, huh? And his reason for it was he just, he ain't got no money, the cost of living, stating that his job relocated, he wanted a more convenient drive. That was his reason behind it. So even though I felt some type of way about it, y'all, I ended up becoming daddy him with dad. We ended up viewing other apartments that was affordable within the budget that would be a convenient drive for the both of us. Even though I had accommodated him with that, it's like it still was in the back of my mind, y'all. Because I was like, if a person to do something like that to you in the midst of what's going on, in the midst of an argument, they'll do it again when they have the chance to or whenever they feel like it. So we had got into it again on last Sunday. I knew it was going to happen because he had called me an eye before he got home because he's in the military. So as he's driving back home, his energy just was off. It's like he was nitpicking or looking for a reason to argue because like one of the first things he mentioned was, um, well, I was telling him that I had a teeth whitening LED light and I was like, it stopped working out of nowhere. So I ordered another one. His dad was like, maybe it needs some batteries. I was like, no, I don't think it need batteries or whatever. And then he was like, well, why you didn't offer it to me? And I was like, huh? He was like, yeah, that's what you do for people you love. And I was just like, what? Like, I, I didn't know that I was supposed to offer you something that has been in my mouth several times. Like, I didn't know that's what you offer to people. Like, somebody let me know if I'm wrong because I, I didn't know. So he finally gets to the apartment. He come in. Energy is negative. Like, just vibe is just off. He had time. I'm tired. I don't want to figure out what we eat today. And I was like, but what you want to eat? And he was like, I don't know. Then I made a suggestion. I was like, McDonald's? And then he was like, no, nah, I don't want McDonald's. I was like, what, like, what is your issue? Like, you coming in here talking about some what you want to eat? You tired of figuring it out? And y'all, I kid y'all not ever since we've been together. Ever since we've been together. When he come home from the weekend with the military, we would just go and buy something to eat so I was confused as of why he uh, here coming in here complaining about food when that's what we normally do like it was nothing new so that's why I was like it's like he was looking for an argument and of course he ended up getting it because at that moment I felt attacked so we kept literally going back and forth back and forth when I tell y'all this man talked to me like a straight dog he literally called me everything that you can think of but a child of God and I was I literally even started crying and when I tell y'all this man laughed at me laughed at me crying was getting happy about me crying watching me hurt from the things he said to me so guess what I end up saying something back to him I end up saying because he's balding at the top I end up saying that's why I didn't post you because you're bald and that really triggered the nerve in him to the point where he grabbed my soda that I had beside the bed. He threw it in my face, drugged me out the bed, and told me to sleep on the floor. He even took the pillows and said, I dare you to get in the bed or get a pillow or I slap the shit out of you. At this point, I'm jazz. I'm really, really like flabbergasted because I already could tell that he had a temper or little anger problems, but he never got that bad. What well, to the point where he getting physical and talking to me that reckless? So of course, I called the police. Soon as I got on the phone with the police, he then started saying, "You really gonna call the police on me, knowing I'm in the military?" I'm like, "Nigga, are you crazy? You literally put your hands on me, told me to sleep on the floor, and surprised that I'm on the phone with the cops. Like, you can't be that delusional." The only thing that saved him from not going to jail that night, y'all, was because it happened at 10. The police didn't call me till 12 that night. I had to go to work in the morning, so of course I was asleep. If they would have came as soon as possible, he definitely would have been in, uh, I'm about to say Blaylock, because that's in Nobby. <laughs> but he would have definitely been in Fulton County. So he, the next day, he ended up coming back to the house. The whole week, he's saying nothing to me. No communication. Later on, by that Friday, he ended up packing up his things, went to wherever he went to for the weekend, never showed back up to that Sunday. When he came back that Sunday, I just asked, I was like, so this is what you really want to do? He ended up stating to me, he was like, um, yeah, pretty much. He said he had already got an apartment, discussing that with his mama, she involved, and all this other type of stuff. And um, that's just what it was. 
And when I tell y'all it had hit, it just really hurt me because my mama informed me, my parents, they informed me that they would help me resign the lease, but it was just the fact that somebody would really reinsure you so many times that they want to live with you, they want to do this life thing with you. I didn't beg him to come up here with me. He begged for me to take him along this journey to drop a bomb like that on me. Saying that he's finna leave, knowing that this apartment is seventeen hundred a month, and I just started a new job like two months ago. I ain't even had enough time to even build my savings up to where I want to be. And it's like he thought that that was okay, and never apologized for none of the things he said or did. Even talked about my family, and I never said anything about any of his people. And one particular person disrespected me, but I still didn't say nothing about him. Like, he clearly has some deep-rooted issues that he needs to work on, clearly, because he's definitely a people pleaser. Because he will say whatever he got to say to who, whoever he's talking to to make you feel like you can trust him or he's trustworthy or you can even depend on him when that's clearly a lie. What makes him also narcissistic is because he don't have any accountability for it. He has no accountability. He never sees where he's wrong. It's like plenty of times where we even get in disagreements and it turns out that I was right. He'll laugh it off, but in the midst of us talking about it, when I tell y'all he will be going so hard as if he got all the answers, like he just know everything. And then he also has PTSD. Like seriously need some help. And I'm not even finna sit here and just act like I'm perfect because I know I'm not. I have trust issues, definitely more now than ever because of this. And I just really just want to warn y'all because somebody right now is thinking about moving in with a significant other. Do not do it. No matter how much of this a man, a woman, whatever the case may be, paint a good picture of you, at any given moment they could turn their back on you and would not feel any remorse. And it's really my fault because my daddy... Um, he's a preacher by the way he told me before I even moved up he said justice is gonna get worse it is gonna get worse don't move in with that boy me being grown guess what still did because I thought I had a soulmate hmm clearly I didn't and guess what that's exactly why I'm coming home my daddy and my mama worried about my safety I'm even worried about my safety I don't even want any dealings with that apartment anymore I'm going back home temporarily I'm not of course gonna put a date on it but it's definitely temporarily to get myself together to get my mind right because one thing about it I understand my purpose I understand my calling I understand I might have some a couple setbacks but guess what I would not be defeated well I would never be defeated and I'm gonna take out on this journey with me because I just feel like this is my purpose. Like so many times, I like to keep things to myself when I am meant to speak about the things I'm going through because I have a testimony. I have a testimony that will be heard. And I really don't care what anybody gotta say about me because I know at the end of the day, I'm authentic with who I am. I am a realist like I ain't trying to put on a front for nobody that's exactly why I'm making this video and posting it because I'm letting it be known and I'm also warning people so they ain't got to go through this as well so as I was cleaning I remember this story this ridiculous story of how some of your boyfriends are so toxic so I'm just gonna let you know so story time so there was this guy on Instagram and as far as I could remember, we were following each other and, um, yeah, we used to, you know, DM each other, but it wasn't like sexual. It wasn't anything. I mean, we sisters, like she's my girl. I'm his girl, you know, that type of art. Anyways, um, we continued that and, you know, and would like each other's content and would comment and I'd comment and like and whatever. So he's like, dude, you might have realized that I have unfollowed you and, but I'm still like interacting with you via stories and via DM. So I'm like, hmm, I didn't realize that you unfollowed me. And I'm like, okay, can you give me the reason why you unfollowed me? So he's like, no, I started this new relationship and this guy um, doesn't want me to follow you. So he asked me to unfollow you and I'm not allowed to like your photos. I'm not allowed to comment on your pictures. Um, that's why I'm just like commenting on your stories and um, I have unfollowed you because of him. Now I'm just like, guys... Are you guys serious? Like, do your boyfriends actually tell you who to follow and who to not to follow? Like, what toxic level of boyfriend is this? And how are you still with this person? So, like, am I being dramatic? Like, 
this is toxic guys why are you with this guy if this guy is going to be telling you who to follow and who not to follow do your boyfriends do that to you guys like just hit me up in the comment section and let me know because girl girl run away run as fast as you can okay i'm gonna attempt to tell the story really quickly in three minutes but it might take more i might have to do part two i didn't figure out he was hacking me until we had broken up um and this is how i figured it out so i was writing an essay on my computer and i got this notification saying that instagram was sending me a six digit password recovery code and i was like i didn't ask for that like where did that come from so then i go into my gmail.com and it's not there anymore and then i check my trash and it's empty and i'm like that's suspicious so then i went to instagram and on the instagram app is like under security a place where it shows you all the emails that instagram has been sending you and it showed literally the last 30 days i was getting like the emails for a six digit password like recovery code whatever every single day like at least twice a day you're probably wondering like how do you know for a fact that it was him well this is how i figured it out i at one point before i broke up was doing homework on his computer and logged into my email on his computer so i knew that he was getting into my email through his computer that i hadn't logged out of yet so it's like low-key my fault but not really because that's freaking weird so what i did is i went to my google settings and i could see all the devices that i was logged in on and i can see the ip addresses of all the devices that i'm logged in on and there was one suspicious computer that wasn't mine sure enough i tracked down the ip address his apartment his literal apartment once i pieced together that he was indeed hacking everything i then was able to piece together that the sleepwalking sleep talking thing wasn't legit and it was him literally lying and just going through my phone and going through my messages so shady the best part of it all is that i learned later on that he had been messaging other girls on instagram and stuff and was legit cheating on me and what like he was going through all my stuff but in reality he was the one being shady like is not that how it always is though it's like always the shady guys who like want to go through all of your stuff that literally are the shady ones themselves moral of the story do not trust anyone and don't log into your email on your boyfriend's computer moments from being in a very toxic relationship that altered my brain chemistry i'm in my bed while i make this because i need to be in my safe place while i recall these things okay moment number one when we were watching euphoria together for the first time and he turned to me and he said wow i am so much like nate jacobs his his relationship with maddie this reminds me so much of me and you moment number two on our third date when he told me that generally he only dates girls that are very young or virgins because he can't handle the idea that they have been with anybody else ever moment number three when he used to get angry like real like not not annoyed angry at me for showering once a day because i was taking too much time away from him not spending time with him showering moment number four when i found a vault on his phone a locked vault of all of the women that he had been with or that had ever sent him explicit photos locked in this vault and when i asked him to delete them because that's weird and creepy and inappropriate he told me that he needed to save them in case they ever tried to blackmail him with photographs that he sent that he could out them online or legally number five this is a good one aka really fucked me up he asked me to make a list for him on his phone because i did all of the organizational mom things and so i opened his phone and i opened the notes app and it popped up to a list of women's instagram handles and it said like girls that are hot like instagram crushes whatever and they were instagram handles of my friends in real life number six i think i don't know at this point there's, there's too many to count when he used to bang on my door or pick the lock whenever i was taking a nap because i was lazy 
in his eyes. Napping is lazy. And last but not least, when we went out together to a bar and I went to the bathroom and he told everyone in the bar that he was breaking up with me and moving to another state. Things I didn't realize were abusive until I was out of the relationship, part 12. Also, I think my foundation is too yellow for me. Oops, we're just gonna have to deal with it. My ex had a very strict rule when it came to bedtime. The first one is that I was not really allowed to go to bed before a certain time. I think I have talked about this before, but basically he would not let me go to bed early. I had to wake up at 4 a.m. for work and he wanted me to stay up till like 9, 9.30, sometimes even 10 or 11. And I would be so tired. I'd be falling asleep on the couch. Like I would fall asleep on the couch watching TV with him and he would poke me. He would like shove me. He would try to wake me up because I wasn't allowed to fall asleep. He wanted me to stay up and hang out with him. And the hanging out was watching TV. It wasn't actually spending time together. It was watching TV. The second, which I don't think I've actually talked to you about before on here, is that I was not allowed to go to bed after him. When he decided he wanted to go to sleep, it didn't matter if I wanted to stay up, I had to go to bed with him. Most of the time this was fine because, as I said, I did have to wake up at 4am for work, but he didn't work the same shifts or schedules as me. So there would be usually clumps of three or four weekends in a row where he would have to work really early on a Saturday or Sunday morning and I would have those days off. So I would sometimes want to stay up a bit later, whether that be going out with friends, which didn't happen very often because I didn't have a lot of friends thanks to him. Or sometimes I just wanted to stay up and like watch TV myself or read or enjoy a couple glasses of wine by myself without having to be around somebody and he wouldn't let me. He would always say things like, oh, you wake me up when you come to bed. You're too loud. I don't want you to wake me up once I'm asleep. He would be like, I want to cuddle with you before I go to sleep. And I would even offer to go cuddle with him for five minutes and then leave. And he would be like, absolutely not.